for Brunel, it'll be number five, Adele Thornton, number seven, Orla Connolly, number eight, Amy Waters, number nine, Megan O'Leary, and number 15, Elish uh, Murphy. Here we go underway, and it's O'Leary with the ball for Brunel. Thornton inside the waters, we are first turnover of the game there as Valby takes the ball, looking to push on the break, was always the basket. Doesn't make it on this occasion, and we would tie up a jump ball between the evil man he looked like Danielle O'Leary. So it'll be Glanmar's ball with a chance to make the first score of the game. Balvi with a three-point shot, and she makes that. She had an excellent game yesterday in the under-18 final, and she'll be looking to play uh, equally as well today. O'Leary penetrates off the screen from Waters, inside the Waters. Great pass from Waters into Murphy, misses that shot, the rebound comes back out. And Connolly makes her first two of the game, gets Brunel the score, as Glanmire leads 3-2. to two. Martin, good start, early scores, that'll sell the nerves a little bit. Nice shot from Sarah Kenny there, you see Brunel going back into the 2-3 zone, Glanmire in man-to-man. -man. It's going to be uh, fast paced, you can see from both teams, a lot of ball movement, tack off the dribble. Yeah, Kenny, Sarah Kenny with her first points of the game here. She had 21 yesterday as she was crowned MVP of uh, Dan Myers' victory in the Under-18 National Cup Final. As they beat DCU Mercy. And another score from Connolly and she goes to four early points. And the score's 5-4 to Glenn Meyer. Obviously two powerhouses of uh, Cork and Irish basketball here. They've dominated the women's underage scene for the last six or seven years with uh, the shot misses from Glanmire. Glanmire have been in six of the last nine under 20 finals, winning three of them. And eight out of the last nine under 18 finals with eight victories, uh, sorry, five victories. Del Thornton misses that shot. Great rebound, Amy Waters. Picks it back out to O'Leary. O'Leary penetrates back to Waters. Inside to Murphy, and she's fouled. And that will be Hannah McCarthy's first foul. Two McCarthy twins playing in this game, Hannah and Kira McCarthy. Hannah's wearing 14, Kira's wearing 12. Like I said, uh, been very dominant the last few years, and Brunel have been in five. Five of the last six finals at under 18 and under 20, having won four of them. Out of those four finals, Adele Thornton, number five, has been MVP in three of them with Amy Watson the other. And Adele, uh, a regular recipient of the MVP award in both the schools finals and the MVP and, uh, and the National Cup finals. So she'll be one to watch there wearing number five for Brunel. Valdi with another three, second one of the game. Doesn't quite go this time. Rebound Waters. Waters looking to set up the play, penetrates there against Wilkinson. Here comes Thornton. She's off the mark there. Rebound with McCarthy. Wilkinson looked to penetrate and attack here on the fast break. A good steal by Connolly. Connolly to the open Waters on the elbow. She takes two, goes in and out there, and a rebound to McCarthy. She looked to attack here. Martin, how do you think the first three minutes have gone of the game? Well, a bit of a pattern set there is uh, the four three-point attempt from Glanmire. Those shots are there against that two-three zone, Matt. So, you know, you can see Megan O'Leary and you can see uh, Adele Thornton trying to get to the basket. Amy Waters had a hand in the ball. So that's, the, I think, the pattern we're going to see for a little while here. See from O'Leary, doesn't quite go. Wilkinson, both teams looking to get their early outlet in a fast break. Connolly will pick up that foul there. That'll be her first game. Actually not, just been called out of bounds, no foul. No, apologise, yeah, it was called for foul there, my mistake. So it will be her first foul. That'll be false point line, Wilkinson. Misses that shot, rebound O'Leary. Again, Megan O'Leary will be the point guard for most of this game for Brunel. She'll be looking to push and control the tempo. Inside, Connolly was at the hot hand early. 
Misses there, but great rebound by Waters. Waters goes up and she puts it back in and extends Brunel's lead to eight points to five. Glanmire would need to look at getting the ball inside. Sir Kenny's now started to come out perimeter. Need to just get some inside uh, pressure against this zone. Here comes Thornton, looking for her first score of the game. Off the steal there, great pass for Connie, and that's her first two. And an early timeout by Mark Scanlon. He looks for the foul, but he's not going to get that one. And uh, at the first break there, with 5 minutes 40, 54 to go in this quarter, Glanmire trail Brunel by 5 points to 10. Martin, Mark's obviously a little bit disappointed below us. What will he be trying to do in what we talk about in this timeout? Yeah, he's going to have to talk about the offense to his team. They've, they've come down, they've put up a few three-pointers, maybe a few too many for his liking early on. The ball hasn't gone inside, Matt. They haven't looked to penetrate enough against that zone defense of Brunel. Uh, both teams will be well used to how the other team plays, so I think he'll be emphasizing trying to get the ball inside, attack from the inside out against that zone. Daniel O'Leary, coach for uh, Singleton Super Landry Brunel, should be pleased with the start, I take it? Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know they've, they've got the pace going. Edel's got the points on the board now, but you see Amy Waters, how much time touches she gets the ball in the key or goes after an offensive rebound. So you know Connolly started off well with the first points, but Adele and Amy now have come into the game as well. Okay, so an early lead for Brunel. These two teams met in the final of the under-20s last year with Brunel winning it easily, 80 to 61, having lost the day before in a thrilling under-18 cup final with went. Brunel 67, Glanmire 68, probably one of the best games of last year's National Cup Finals. So uh, the two teams know each other, in and out, so could go either way, but Brunel with the early lead here as they look to, to get a good defence here and extend that lead, but Glanmire will be looking to chip into that here as Leslie Ann Wilkinson brings the ball up. Kenny over to Balvi. Eva Marnie misses pass again. Adele Thornton off the races, off the pass from Conley. She finds Waters. Waters doesn't quite make a pass here to Orla. Sorry to, to Murphy. Murphy just loses the handle on it. Wilson open on the three-point line, but she looks to set something up. Sarah Kenny takes a tough shot there. It's rebounded by Megan O'Leary. That's to two times down the floor now. Glamour have tried to get the ball to the free throw line to Sarah Kenny. Uh, first time was a turnover, and that time there she, she got it, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't the best shot she could have taken. Here comes Thornton, looks to drive, puts up a little float there, and there we see. See what Adele Thornton can do there at her very best. Well, Adele's used to this. She's heading to, she's heading to America next year to play Division I college basketball, so. Here we see. Uh, as McCarthy, this great hustle, gets the ball back there, goes to Kenny. Shot on the shot clock for Valby, doesn't go. But Martin, we saw early on, Glamour made a couple of, uh, made a three and a long two, but since then they've not been able to make long baskets. How are they going to get the ball inside? Uh, they've, got players who, they've got players who can put the ball on the floor, Matt. They've got to attack that zone. Got to be a little bit more patient and, and execute their passes inside just a tiny, tiny little bit better. So fouls call on Wilkinson. We see our first change. That's Hayley Lenahan's going to check into the game. Not quite sure who she's coming in for. So she's coming in for Evo Marnahy. So Hayley Lenahan will make her first appearance. Inside, Jamie Waters being guarded by McCarthy. Waters takes the shot, and she gets a friendly roll. And the lead's getting creeping up there. It's nine-point lead. Brunel 19, Glanmire 5. Glanmire really need to score at this point as they go. Sarah Kenny on the foul line. Check that, scores 14 points, uh, 5, a nine-point lead. Brunel again, Thornton drives inside, and she goes to six points personal. Another great basket by Del Thornton. Leads up to 11 now at 16 to 5. Scott Balby drives inside, but again, Mark, you can see there's just no rebounders in there oh, for, for Glamour at the and moment. The, the shot selection, like you see Adele get right to the front of the rim, make three layups. You know, Glamour have struggled there, they're not getting the best shot selection there. Wilkinson might go away with a foul there, but travel calls on Amy Waters, has just shuffled her feet. And we'll see more changes here from Coach Scandal as he tries to find winning. Holly Hurley checks in for uh, Leslie Ann Wilkinson. 
And in for the first time is Aoife Deneen for Brunel. As she comes in for Connolly, who's had a good start to the game. And a cheap turnover there as Valby just slips through a hand and goes out of bounds on the sideline. Glanmire haven't settled, settled at all. It's not like uh, the game yesterday I had here in the, in the other cup final where they got off to a flying start, and a lot of those players are here today too, so just haven't settled yet. Yeah, Martin's referring to the two cup finals that uh, Glanmire played in yesterday. It was Team Montnoddy Hotel, Glanmire, winning the Women's Premier Cup against Colester. And the under-18, as Valby misses another one there. And the under-18 team of Glanmire defeated DCU Mercy to win the under-18 titles. So they're going for a unique treble, to try and win all three of the, the Junior and the Premier Cups. With Later on today, we've still got the Women's Senior Cup to come with Port Leash Panthers taking off Lick Dynamos. Ooh. Amy Waters goes up and under inside, gets through, and she's fouled. By Hi Hannah McCarthy. Timing's everything there, Matt. There was a, a travel involved in that process too, so poor Caden saw the foul first and the, the travel second. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I thought she might have just uh, taken an extra step before she got hit, but she gets the benefit of the doubt this time and she'll take two shots. Look to extend the lead. 17-5, Martin. I think it's been uh, at least six minutes since the last score and, and it's uh, almost creeping up to 15 unanswered points now for, for Brunel. So. Mark Scanlon on the bench there will be getting a little bit worried for that one. Yeah, he's got to, do a, got to do a job here now on Amy Waters and Del Thornton because they're the most prominent players right now for, for Brunel. Um, they scored the last 10 points for, for Brunel. Another tough shot taken from Sarah Kenny there. Needs to get a bounce a little bit more. I suspect she'll be confident from yesterday, but things aren't going for just yet at this time. Deneen gets the ball over to Murphy, doesn't get it, Valby with the rebound. And here comes Holly Hurley looking to push to Kenny. Kenny passes, just fouled there. I think that's going to go against Ethan Deneen. It does. Here we see a sub here as uh, Kiwi McCarthy is going to replace her twin sister Hannah. Early inside to Kenny. Kenny kicks over to Valvi. Valvi opens three. They really need this to go. It doesn't. But Kenny gets the rebound. So they'll have another chance. McCarthy gets down to Valvi. Valvi drives the basket. With good defense from Waters. She makes a stand. The ball goes back. And O'Leary will look to set up the play. They're going in against contact every single time, Matt, not able to finish. Like they had an open three because the ball went inside, came back out, get the rebound, attack. But I mean, Brunel are doing a really good job there at their back line of that zone, just standing, taking contact. And it's very hard for Lamar to finish right now. Waters gets inside. Miss Shaw gets a hand on it. Chance Kira of the layup McCarthy. here. She's Lena Hood up in front of her. Lena Hood missed the layup, but she's fouled there. Murphy's got the foul. So uh, Glamire eventually create an opportunity. They'll go to the foul line here. You see uh, the person of Brunel is creating a lot more opportunities than Glamire at the minute. So we see substitutions coming in here. Conley will check back into the game. And Danina Murphy will check out. And for the first time, we see Grace Kelleher for Brunel. She checks into the game. Get a lid on the basket for Glamour at the moment. They just can't buy a basket. They need one or two just to go before the end of this quarter. Doesn't get it again. Good hustle by Connolly. She gets the ball. And Waters looks to push. Gets it forward to O'Leary. O'Leary drives, find the open corner on the three-point line. Doesn't go this time. And Lenahan, she's got Sarah Kenny up by herself. Kenny decides to pull up for the two. Maybe she'll be a bit more aggressive here, but she hustles. Gets doesn't get the ball back, it's been a kick ball. And we're gonna go that Myers ball. Is that uh, is that a tail of the first half? Sarah Kenny's choice there, first quarter. Yeah, she just very hesitant, Matt, when she caught the ball. And even Matt's saying there, get to the basket. Like, I mean, just Glamour seem hesitant with their decision making, whether to go to the basket or, or they're taking a, a long outside two or three. Three one minute to go in this quarter. The score is Brunel 18, Glamour 5. Glamour really struggling to score here at the moment. And Glamour taking advantage. 
as Kelleher takes the three, doesn't get it, but the rebound comes to Conley. Back to O'Leary and back to Conley again. Conley and Waters play, but McCarthy just gets a hand on it. Lamar looks to break here as Valve attacks. Early outside to Lenehan, doesn't get the ball, and again, Amy Waters cleans up on the rebound with 30 seconds to go. Brunel will have a chance to extend their lead. They slow it down, Waters in the corner to O'Leary. O'Leary will take a three, doesn't go. Balbi was loose by herself at the basket, but the pass from Lenehan fell short. And with 10 seconds to go, it'd be Brunel with a chance to make the, take the final shot of this quarter as they lead 18. Oh, this turnover there, so Damai, one last chance on three seconds. Balbi just throws up and uh, nearly gets the three, but. But at the end of the first quarter, Slamire leads Superman half. Slamire trail Singleton Super Value Brunel by a score of 5 to 18. Mark Guy will have a work cut out in this uh, one minute break. Yeah, they seem hesitant, Matt. They haven't settled at all. You know, they're both ends of the floor. They, Mark will be disappointed they've given up 18 points, but Brunel have done a really nice job on their offense, getting the balls in the right spots. Right? Their movement off the ball is really good. But the pressure that Dan Meyer putting on themselves, not, not getting an easy basket or, you know, getting to score an easy basket. They've got loads of shots that they might say they, they're the shots they want, but they've got to do a better job now trying to get the ball closer to the basket, make some easy scores, and take some pressure off themselves then. And uh, Daniel O'Leary below us here, you can see just uh, issuing a few instructions to Brunel. She'll be very pleased with this quarter, obviously, and asking for more of the same, I take it. Yeah, she's, uh, she's got to be really happy with, like, 18 points, keep, keep it, this Lamar team to five. You know, your expectations would be, is to be taking keep ten, teams to 10, 12 points, but she's kept Lamar to five in the first quarter. I mean, she just wants to keep the momentum and the, the intensity of her team up now for, for this quarter as well. Like, we've seen games here in the last week, Matt, whether it be school or, or club teams have gone up into big leads, and uh, as the quarters go on, you know, the team up has started to take its foot off, off the gas, and the other team's made big comebacks, so... I don't, I'd say Danielle doesn't want that to happen today. Okay, as we start the second quarter, I'm sure glad my won't panic. Very experienced coach. Yesterday's Premier League co winning coach, Mark Scannell. And uh, a team packed full of Irish internationals, but they need to start scoring soon as Brunel keep extending their lead inside the ball, goes to Waters. Waters, a great pass to the cutting. Conley can't quite get her hands on the ball. Back out to Waters. Waters penetrates, finds O'Leary open for three. Falls short that time, Sarah Kenny gets the rebound. And Holly Hurley looks to set it up. Goes into Hannah McCarthy and Kieran McCarthy, both into the game now. That'll be a struggle for us on the commentary. Rebound Waters, again, another missed shot from Glanmire. Martin's going to be dead to their comments at this point, obviously. Well, it's, it's, they're going to second-guess themselves every time you shot. And there's a nice shot from Miguel Torrens in her first three of the game, Matt. But Lamar has got to be making them hesitant. What, no, what, what, when to shoot, when, when to drive. You know, they just got to get some pattern here to themselves and get simple basket. Run their offenses, run their sets, have confidence in them. Yeah, we see another three from Thornton there. Yeah. Yeah. their lead as uh, Adele goes to nine points. Kenny can't make the three. Oh, yeah. Lamar, and we're back to Waters. Only up for the shot. Bounces around, doesn't go in. Brunel dominating all facets of the game here as Waters gets the rebound, but it comes off Connolly. You see Mark is pleading with the girls just to go grab the ball, go get some energy going. He's trying to get them to get, you know, really get into this now and they're, and they're struggling and, and it's not, it, you know, these are really good players that are on the floor. This is what happens when you play in finals. You know, people wouldn't have expected this from Glamour because all these girls through school and club are used to being here, but this is what happens. Yeah, you very much see that, that uh, Amy Waters is sagging off. Hannah McCarthy a little bit there. They're giving him a chance to take shots. The line on the missing at this point. The confidence has to be very low. And Brunel continue to push on the pressure with Thornton driving the basket and she's fouled. That foul has gone against Kiwa McCarthy. That will be her first foul. Thornton moves into double figures for the game here as we're only two minutes into the second quarter. 
And Martin, that'll be a worry for Mark Scannell. She's done it quietly as well, getting the double figures this early. Absolutely, like she didn't score the, the first eight, ten points for uh, for Brunel, like, and then all of a sudden now she's up into double figures, and that's that's what Adele Thornton does. You know, Adele Thornton's well capable of scoring 20, 30 points in games. She's done at a Premier League level, she's done at schools level. Yeah, okay. Doesn't go like a broken record here. And you have to feel for Glenn Mike, because you, you know we've seen enough of these girls yesterday, today, in the schools finals this week as well, with a lot of them. They can all make baskets, they can all score excellent players, a lot of Irish internationals, but the luck is just not going their way. Great defense from Brunel, mixed with uh, maybe a little bit of nervousness for Glenn Mike as Adele Thornton picks up a foul. That'll be her spot, first foul, so it won't be a worry for Coach Daniel O'Leary. And we're coming up on close to eight and eight and a half minutes, Matt, since uh, Landmeyer scored. There's another three that's just come off the back of the rim. And, and Megan O'Leary's off running now. Brunel just keep coming at you, Matt, the whole time. They don't stop. They just keep working. They keep running at you. You know, it's con it's just intense pressure the whole time. Yeah, I think we've gone well over ten minutes of basketball now without a score from Landmeyer. And at any standard, you wouldn't see that very often, especially not with girls of this calibre. So it's really not been their day so far, but... We've seen in some of the other games, a quick run, a couple of baskets with some confidence, get the way back into it. Hey, Lennon drives the basket, doesn't get the basket again. And the longer this goes on, the more the, the confidence will drain out of them. They need something to give them a spark. Oh, well, Haley did everything right there. The ball came back out. Defense came running at her to close out. She put it on the floor straight away, beats the defender, right? But then gets caught between two minds whether she goes all the way to the basket or does she pull up and the help defender that's coming to her ends up being another missed shot. You know, that's what's happened now to Glanmire this, this last quarter and a bit like. So, you know, you can see Mark, he's really like just trying to emphasize, you know, simple things to do on offense, whether to shoot, whether to drive to the basket. Just make decisions and stick to them and see what's happening in front of them. Um, no, Mark's not panicking just yet. You know, he would, he would clearly like the scoreline to be slightly different. But Mark's been Mark's too experienced. Like, he will get the girls going at some point here. I mean, these girls have all played in big cup finals, not this year, as well as last year. So, so I made a cut before that Mark, won't, uh, Mark wouldn't panic as they start the second quarter. You said the same there. At what point will he panic? Well, I'll speak from my own experience, Matt. Uh, a couple of seconds off from this point. I've been here once or time, two times before, you know, so... Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you've been there with me as well when we've been in this situation, so... You know, Mark, Mark, Mark knows, Mark will come up with something here. He'll, he'll, he'll get something, he'll get his team going, he'll do something different. Yeah, I have to say, been there myself as well, as of you, and uh, while she's trying to, trying to stay calm, the longer it goes on, and, and players you know can make these shots, aren't making them, the more you'll get a bit of a panic. He needs something to go just to, just to give him a little bit of confidence, give them a little bit of confidence, and make something spark. The shot clock goes off just as Hyde McCarthy missed that shot, and Amy Waters looking to penetrate. Waters in the corner for open Grace Kelleher. She doesn't make that one. And Martin, you have to say that whilst we, we keep talking about Glenn Myers versus Brunel, haven't been as fluent as we've seen in the past. They've only 22 points with 14 minutes to play. Sarah, can he take the three? Doesn't go again. So uh, it's still within reach for Glanmire if they can find some sort of form. Well, Brunel have taken a few more trees than maybe we'd have expected them to do. So, um, And they, they haven't been hitting too many apart from Adele's one. Here's a chance for Glanmire to get an easy two. Sarah Kenny, but she caught it and she stopped Matt. She just caught it and should have put it on the floor. One dribble, make the layup. Yeah, you can see Mark's not happy. He's trying to encourage them all, but... Below, normally you'd see Sarah just take that and go away to the basket. A little bit of hesitancy, ends up taking a jump shot and something she perhaps could have got a layup for. And that's Alex Machette that checked into the game for Nelm. Just goes in and out there. And Glamour, they need something easy, a fast big layup. Maybe like the one Sarah Kenny had on the last chance, just to get them going. They trail here by 17 points. A deep three by Lenehan. That doesn't go. Glenn Meyer got themselves uh, all caught up there. It was easy defense for, for, for Brunel. The spacing wasn't the best from Glenn Meyer and Brunel could, and then Haley was, was well outside the three point line for that shot. O'Leary across the machete. Inside got wide open waters down the middle. She drives and she fouls and makes that shot. Amy Waters go 
goes to eight points there. She extends the lead, and we see three subs coming in. Lauren Valby. Lauren Valby checks in. Wilkinson checks in. So Amy Waters will go to the line here, take two shots. Waters makes that shot there. So back on, I think you might have just lost us for a minute. We're back here now, and the score's 25, 25 to five, the single with Supertani Valley Brunel. Inside the Wilkinson, can't get a hands on that ball. And O'Leary will look to push for Brunel. She finds Moynihan. Moynihan looks inside, but good hands from Kiwa McCarthy. And she sees Lauren Valvey up, up front. She drives all the way to the basket. Oh. And again, doesn't get the call. Great block there from Megan O'Leary. For Brunel, everything going Brunel's way. As Thornton drives, finds an open machete. Good steal here, and here we see a chance. Oh. Sums up everything we've seen from Glamour so far. We had an easy break there, but just a, a pass off as Valby goes up and under. She doesn't make the basket, and uh, it's a case of keep on repeating yourself at the moment. Sometimes it can be a little too technical about what you describe what you see on the floor, Matt. But like, even there, there three opportunities Glamour to make a nail. Got blocked. One was uh, not a great pass for the fast break. Lauren Valby does everything right, and the ball doesn't go in. Just sometimes it's just one of those days. And a foul's call on Thor Thornton, that will be her second. They want to speak too many. As subs come in there. Lenhan checks out Holly, uh, Evil Man, he comes back in. Even from the free throw line, Wilkinson can't get it, and I, I can't remember ever seeing a drought this long in I've any had, basketball. Okay. <laughs> and you really have to feel for Glamour at the moment. Nothing at all will go for them, and that confidence must be sapping out of them at the moment. And Brunel just continue to keep playing and extend this lead. The county stands at 20, five points to 25. Waters goes inside against McCarthy. And Kiwa McCarthy will get that foul. That'll be her third. And Amy Waters, who's having her way inside at the minute. Del Thornton takes a break for singles and Super Valley Brunel. And Orla Connolly will come back in for. Waters makes that shot. Second for Waters, and it will be Kieran McCarthy, who just picked up a third foul. We'll check out the game, and Maeve Campbell will make her first defense of the day. Martin, maybe, uh, maybe Maeve Campbell checking into the game for the first time. We'll come in with a little bit more confidence in some of the players, and maybe she'll be the one to, to get them off and running on the scoreboard. You know, our girls are still working really hard, man. It's like they haven't stopped playing, they haven't stopped trying to do the right things. So they haven't got the look of the role. I mean, they just have to keep playing. They have to hope that at some point it starts to click. It hasn't clicked on offense. Brunel will do what Brunel do. I'm not sure there are many, even the most diehard Brunel fan wouldn't have thought with three minutes to go in the second quarter they were going to be up by 22 and, and Lamar have only scored five so you know, I don't think anyone's having an expectation yet that any game here is going to be won you know, for Brunel, the game, for the girls' confidence they just really need that to hopefully make some easy baskets and try and get themselves back in the game Waters, the shot in the short corner but rebounded there, tipped out by Eva Manny and it goes to O'Leary oh man, he drives Ethan Neen takes three, doesn't get it. Wilkinson has the ball. Two minutes 40 to go in this quarter. Finally, we've got...
get one. As Eva Manahi makes the first basket since the two minute mark in the first quarter. So we've gone nearly 18 minutes without a basket. 16 minutes without a basket from Glenn Myers. Eva Manahi makes that one. And straight away, Brunel call a the timeout. They must be in panic, Mark. the coach when you're when you're 22 points up the other team scores and you can take a time out just to have a chat about it um, you know that that more gets to take a shot Mark can track it out can we repeat the process again can we get another stop in defense I'd say Danielle's going to talk about the last couple of offenses that Brunel had the last one in particular shot went up with the buzzer and they got stuck on one side of the floor and nothing nothing good was coming out of it I'll give Lamar a bit of call for Brunel Danielle's obviously has whatever get things going so So with uh, 2.37 to go, uh, it's a 20 point game uh, to Brunel, 27-7. And teams come back out on the court. And here comes Megan O'Leary. Waters has been a centerpiece of everything there in the middle of that key for Brunel. Looks to go inside, great block there from Balby. So Leary scores inside and extends that lead again and Wilkerson will come up the court here. She sees Balby wide open on the far side. Balby will skip past, cross Lennon. Wilkerson take the three, doesn't go. Balby takes the two and now maybe a bit of confidence there. Real nice offense though, the, just before the, the offensive rebound. Landmeyer did a really good job moving the ball. You know, they got the ball reversal twice. Uh, good rebound by Maeve Campbell, kicks it out, and Lauren Falvey did a nice job, pulled up just uh, for, uh, for two uh, just outside the key. And you see Glenmire had tried something, and they've gone for full court press. Good, a good option for Mark Scannell. Absolutely, absolutely. Get his team going, get his team playing. See if they can meet uh, Brunel earlier. Try to get the ball out of, out of their hands, see if they can force some mistakes there. Murphy gets the rebound there from... The shot was blocked, the shot clock's still going down, we've got a steal here. They've come out of that zone, Matt, and they've gone man-to-man -man travel. Come out of that zone, gone man-to-man, -man, see if they can create something, see if they can force Brunel into mistakes, take them out of their offense. You know, um, it's a good call by Mark, he had to do something and he's done it. Yeah, good steal from Claire O'Brien as she checks in the game the first time, but a travel by Leslie Ann Wilkinson, sees the ball go back to Brunel. O'Leary will take a three, and that hits nothing but net. Then again, Matt, when you can do that, doesn't matter what defense in front of you, so nice shot by, uh, by Megan O'Leary. And is that the difference there? We've seen, we've seen Megan take four or five threes already that haven't gone as uh, Campbell is called for the travel. But uh, is the difference that the fact that they've got so many points on the board, her confidence stays up and she's able to make the next one. Yeah, and, and Brunel, Brunel are trying to get ball movement, two, three people touch the ball. You see there with Lamar that time, it was one pass that goes inside and may have got caught for the travel going up against two players. Nice fast break. Great pass from O'Leary. Can't be finished there by... Looked like Grace Kelleher on the far side. Actually, it was Moynihan. Valby takes a three, misses. There we see a bit more rebound this time from Dan Meyer. And that proves, proves good for them as Claire O'Brien recently checked in the game, gets that rebound. She looks to penetrate. Again, Amy Waters inside, but O'Brien keeps going, doesn't make that one. Gets a hand back on the ball. The shot clock goes on. But more positive from Glenn Meyer Martin is uh, Claire O'Brien's checked in the game there, and she's really looking to hustle along with, with Maeve Campbell on the rebound. Absolutely, their energy levels have gone up loads here now. Okay. There shouldn't have been a 24 second violation there. The ball did hit the ring. But you see Maeve Campbell's working really hard inside. You know, they've they got to get the ball in her hands there in the high post so she can become a passer or, or she's open for a shot for herself. Out to Valvi. Nice pass. Oh. Travel call against uh, Eva Mani. Actually, it might be, might be called against Campbell in the end for the pass from Mani. So Megan O'Leary sits at the ball, looking for the last play of this half as Brunel leads 32 to 9 into Waters. Great shot there. 
on Andre Moynihan makes a long two just on the buzzer and half court shot from Balby doesn't go and that'll be the end of the first half there in his under 20 women's national cup final and it's Singleton super value Brunel who leads 34 to 9 from Glanmire. Welcome back to the National Basketball Arena for the second half of this under 20 women's national cup final. Singleton super value Brunel are leading this game 34 to 9 against Glanmire after the first half. Glanmire really struggled to score and we'll be hoping to have a a very different second half. It's expected to be a really close game, but as far it hadn't, uh, hasn't turned out that way, as Brunel start with the ball. Adele Thornton. Passed by Waters, but held there by Evo Manahi for Glenmire. That'll be her first foul. And Martin, Glenmire will be uh, hoping to start with, with uh, a clean slate in this second half and really get themselves going and get the scores on the board. Well, first job, Mark, Mark could be saying win the, win the first quarter, win the, win the third quarter, win the fourth quarter, you know, get a stop in the first offense, which just hasn't happened. Like, so now they come the first time in offense. All right, you see a little bit of a, a chop coming here with, with Brunel. Wilkinson from the corner doesn't go. So well, actually, Sarah Kenny from the corner. Valvio open for three. She started with a three, but hasn't been able to make one after making those first couple. Conley just managed to save that ball, and it'll be Brunel with the ball again, mm. looking to attack. <laughs> open shot for Waters. And Waters goes to 13 points. Maya, she had a really impressive first half. Everything seemed to go through her. And she's a top scorer in the game, one with 13. Yeah, and she's, uh, she's added to her game. She's looking to shoot the ball a little bit more as, instead of just all post-up play, which is really pretty. Nice basket there from uh, Leslie Allen Wilkinson. So Wilson gets the basket and gives Glanmire an early score as they trail 11-38. Backdoor pass to Thornton, but good recovery by O'Manahy. And we Brunel ball from the end line with 13 seconds to go on the shot clock. Don't forget, still to come today. Next up, at 1.30, we have the... Sorry, 2.30, we have the President's Cup with Moy Cullen taking on Blue Demons as Amy Waters gets one in, inside. So Blue Demons and Moy Cullen will come up at 2.30. That'll be followed by Portleash Panthers and Oblet Dynamos. 4.30, so please do stay with us the rest of the afternoon. We've got two more of the National Cup finals to come. Amy Waters is such a hard matchup for, for the Glenmire girls right now. Uh, made a basket, just jump shot from the elbow, and that time went to make a post move. Uh, got her own rebound off and finished. Inside by Wilkinson, you can see by the look on her face there, she missed that one. It's just a... Uh, they just have that negative score at the moment. It's going to take a Mega O'Leary. Great drive all the way on the far side. She gets that too. And Valvi just clips her heels and gets a foul there. And again, Brunel continue to punish all the Glanmire misses. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, getting worse than each time there. He uh, drove to the basket all right, and then gets the, the chance of the three-point play. It's just not going well at all here for Glanmire. Come down, miss a layup, come back and give up a, a foul on a layup. Yeah, I think Leslie Al Wilkinson's just her demeanor after that missed shot just showed the way that the Glanmire girls are feeling at the moment. They really need something to get them going, whether it be steals and some fast breaks, something to get the crowd behind them and give them a bit of confidence. Great pass inside there by McCarthy. Kenny turns down, doesn't make it, but gets her own rebound, shoots again, just goes away from the basket and just uh, doesn't quite make that one. Maybe much, she needs to be a little bit more aggressive in the way she goes to the basket she's fading away a little bit which you don't normally see from her yeah and she was making those type of shots yesterday Matt too like so it's really frustrating for her you can see how frustrated she is right now on the court Thornton out to Connolly Connolly takes a long three and there it goes in a nutshell a bank shot I'm sure she didn't mean to bank that from three point shot but when it's going when it's your day it's your day and Orla Connolly makes the three and extends this lead again great drive down the middle Good pass from McCarthy and Kenny is fouled and she'll be hoping to get these free throws just so she can feel what it's like for the ball that goes through the hoop. It's, uh, it's interesting, Matt, how Brunel have come out in the third quarter here. They've uh, extended their, their, their zone defense up the floor. 
you know, so Glamour meeting the defence a little bit there, which is very clever from Danielle. Uh, it's a good idea. She doesn't want to be sitting back and letting Glamour come and have a run at them. And again, Glamour struggle from the free throw line as they trail by an unbelievable 36 points, 35 points. Would never have been expecting this. Expect to be a really close final. But Glamour have just never got going in this game. Drive from Waters. Good block from McCarthy. Great running from Amy. Amy's the one that got the rebound, Matt. And uh, just ran from basket to basket in there. And uh, three passes later, she's the one taking the shot. Yeah, and she's having a great game, really. Really being positive, moving well. And again, with the ball in her hands here, she looks to set it up. Daniel O'Leary again. Very, very well. Shoots a three, doesn't get it. Hannah McCarthy with a rebound. Forward to Wilkinson. Gets it forward to Amani. Kenny in the corner. Into McCarthy. Good move from her. Again, doesn't quite go. She breaks the defense but misses the layup. And O'Leary guarded tightly by Sarah Kenny. She now has to go back to find her man. No one helped her out there. And uh, Murphy's wide open under the basket. And there you see the, the lack of confidence in their defense there. No one helped out Sarah Kenny as she was guarding, guarding the ball and Daniel O'Leary. It's just uh, they switched off completely there. That's what we expect to see from Sarah Kenny. It was a nice drive by Leslie Ann, kicked it out to Sarah. You can see Glamour, you know, um, Callum McCarthy missed the layup. She comes back, she's frustrated with herself, her team, you know, switched off and, and Brunel got the easy layup off it. Drive by Thornton. Good steal by Wilkinson. Glamour looking to get the break. They need this to go now. Great drive by Wilkinson. But foul call on Conley as she tries to make the block. Uh, just there where, where uh, Leslie Ann got the steal, Matt. You know, how many of the Glamour girls got ahead of her there to help her on the fast break for, for an easy layup? She had to take the ball to the basket herself. Um, Glamour girls just holding back a little bit. And I know it's, it's really tough. It's easy for us to say that up here. Um, you know, the girls are trying, but someone needed to get ahead of Leslie Ann there so she could create a two-on-one situation. You can see their body language at the moment is very down and, like you say, very difficult to criticise after they've had such a tough start to this game and the ball just hasn't gone into them. Credit to, to Brunel's defence, so they have played a, you know, a great style. They've made them take tough shots, which they've not been able to make. So it's a good game plan from Brunel, but uh, Glamour struggling as they look to press with a 2-2-1 zone press. O'Leary gets it long to Thornton. She penetrates inside. Inside to Murphy. Back out Thornton, doesn't take the three. Dribbles inside, takes a long two, and she makes that, and she adds to her tally. And that was 12 points for with a, with, with a hand in her face, Matt. Like, I mean, it's just really good play from Adele Thornton. But Brunel are so patient with the ball. They keep looking for each other. You know, their decision-making has been really good. Got to be really impressed with it. Barbie again, you saw she looks away. Disappointment there. Just going in and out for her. And uh, the ball's not quite dropping. So five minutes gone this quarter. And it's 50 points to 15. The girls are taking the shots, Matt, Matt that, that Mark would have worked on over them all year too, and the running the offense. They're the shots they've made all year. You know, they're just not dropping. You know, Mark's trying to try to get them going to the basket a bit more or whatever. But like, you know, these are the these are the shots that these Lamar girls take week in, week out, and make week in, week out. You know, so you got to have a lot of sympathy for them. So yesterday in the start, the under 18 girls, as Wilton takes the three again in and out. In the under 18 final yesterday, Glamour had a superb. First quarter scoring in excess of 30 points, and they were 80% from the three point line. But today, you see the danger in uh, shooting from the three point line. You live by it, you die by it. It's not work from today. But like you say, it's something they work on well, and all these girls are well capable of making them as they ring the changes again. Thornton looking to penetrate into Walton as a partner in crime for this game. Deneen takes a shot, doesn't get it on that occasion. She was clearly out of bounds there. She tried to push it back in, so Murphy stepped on the line. It'll be Glanmire's ball. Trained at the moment by a staggering 35 points. Lennon with a nice fake. Takes a tough shot, and that doesn't go. It's not the type of shot that, I, that you expect to see from Haley. Um, you know, I've seen her a few times this season and last season when she played the Premier League team and, and 18s and 20s. 
It's just not the type of shot that you just expect from her. And you can see Mark's reaction to it. Nice drive from Thornton in between two players, gets the layup. Thornton gets all into the basket and she's starting to spark up again. She goes to 14 points. Lennon will keep shooting, doesn't make that one. You have to give the girls credit now, Glamour. They've not given up, they keep on going. They still look for that little spark that will get them playing, get a crowd behind them a little bit. As Murphy gets the ball into Waters, you even see. As Thornton gets a third basket in a row there. Two questions for you, Martin. So, you see, first of all, very difficult to play defense when you're not scoring. You can see that the energy is kind of drained out of Glanmire and they get hit by all the screens. The fact that Glanmire have been in two finals already this weekend and a good few of these girls, some of them played under 18 yesterday and played their second game in the under 20 days. Some of them played in the, in the Premier Final last night. I don't know what, they might not play too many minutes. The mental energy to get up for that game and the atmosphere in it without taking a lot out of them and we'll be seeing that today. Yeah, mentally and emotionally, Matt, I would say is the, is the big issue. You know, the girls are going to be fit, they've been preparing for, for this day, they've peaked for this day physically, but, but emotionally it's really hard. And when things don't go your way, you saw there in the last play, they were supposed to switch in the screen, you know, the, the communication wasn't the best on it, and then they just didn't get out and they left off an easy jump shot. And you then, when Mark, Mark called the timeout, you can see we're supposed to do this, just, the girls are saying it to each other, you know, they're frustrated. That's what just happens, it's really hard for them to, to, to concentrate and play at that level continuously and when you look when they look at the scoreboard it's just even harder the girls are really trying like they're running out on the floor they want to keep doing this they want to do it right you know you have to have, you have to give them a lot of credit both teams you know both teams that they are doing what they do and they're doing well it's just not dropping for glamour right now but they haven't given up yeah Brudel's first game of the weekend so they're fresh and it really looks like that, that as holly hurley takes the three that they're getting yourself up and dealing with the nerves of two games in a weekend as most of these girls have, really can pay its toll eventually. Thornton to Waters. Thornton drives again and drives the basket. Doesn't get the foul, but it'd be Brunel ball from the end line. As uh, Claire O'Connell has checked into the game for the first time for Singleton Super Valley Brunel, and she'll get the ball from the end line. Costa O'Leary, O'Leary picks the pass, takes the three. Doesn't go, Falzi with a rebound. It just slips through the hands of Hannah McCarthy there. Just to give you a few figures, at halftime, Glanmire were one for 15 from the three-point line. They've taken at least another five in the second half. None of them have been successful. And whilst you know they can make these shots, as Adele Thornton just punishes them, and that's... Uh, Nine in a row for Adele, as she takes her personal tally to 19 in the game. Holly Hurley missed that one, rebound by Kim McCarthy. Can't make that shot. And it'll be Waters, she finds Adele Thornton up in front of her. And that foul's had a bit of a clutch. But Thornton makes that basket as Lenehan just fouls her. And really, we're seeing the best out of Brunel now at the moment with uh, Waters and Thornton starting to dominate. That's 11 points in a row for Thornton there and a great run for, for, for Brunel. Yeah, and uh, again, came off a missed shot, get the rebound, Didel was out real fast, caught the ball, takes it to the basket and gets fouled. You know, Mark's wondering, was it was an offensive, but I think the girl was well inside the, the restricted area, so it's going to be a blocking foul. So Idel has a chance here for another three-point player, second of the game. This is that shot rebounded by McCarthy. Balby into Hannah McCarthy. Send back to Kira McCarthy who looks to penetrate, doesn't get there. Hurley, he takes a three. Again, bounces just out there, just off. Just a little, a little bit short, a little bit long all the time. Not quite found their range. Here's Balby, just reads that, gets a steal. Up to Hurley in front, but again, the ball slips away from them. You can see, Matt, they're trying to do the right thing. You know, they are just trying and trying to do the right thing. You know, we've been in this situation where you have to, where, you know, your, 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 your nature is to shoot lots of trees. 
you know, we coached the Europeans where, where the boys had two lots of trees and people are on the outside looking to do something else. This is what these girls do well. Here's the steal though for Landmark, chance for an easy two. Yeah, great basket there for Claire O'Brien. Yeah, it said, oh, it's very difficult to criticise the way they've played. It works should on many occasions. Should have been a double dribble call there. Referees don't need to switch off either now because Mark isn't going to give up and Mark is going to be on their case because he wants, he wants to try and get back in this game. Thornton just misses that one. Falvey fights for the rebounds with Murphy and there'll be a jump ball and it'll go to Glanmire. Yeah, like I said, you can't criticise them. They're, they're playing their hearts out. Ball just hasn't dropped for them. You know, they would normally expect to make the kind of shots they've been taking. If they had made them early, it's a different game, but things aren't going for the moment. And it's 17 to 59 to Brunel with 40 seconds to go in this third quarter. McCarthy, nice drive. Just nice spin move on the baseline there, and she gets fouled, and she'll go to the line for two shots. And we saw in the first half, you can see by the minutes played, Mark ended up using all 10 players, all played at least four or five minutes, which would be fairly unusual for this, but just a case of trying to find the winning formula. Yeah, trying, trying to get a unit on the floor that might try and keep him in the game or even create some momentum for the team, you know. You know, there are people on the bench, you know, who might, who might, who, do, who you'd expect to be on the floor right now, but you know, he's, he's just trying everything to get get going. And she makes the second free throw. They're up to 18. So 38 seconds to go. Score is 59 to single Super Valley Brunel. 18 as uh, Del Thornton just picks up the foul of Lauren Falvey. That'll be her second. Out in front of us there, you see some of the, the Moy Cullen players just going across the warm-up. They'll be on next. Moy Cullen versus uh, Blue Demons in the President's Cup final, so stay with us for that. That'll be coming up at 2.30. Thornton inside to Murphy. Have to get that shot up. Doesn't go off in time. McCarthy with the rebound. And Holly Hurley will look to attack the Glanmire. A missed three from Claire O'Brien, and it will be end line ball and go back to Glanmire. The timeout score, that's the end of the quarter, sorry, end of the quarter, so the end of the third quarter, Glanmire, 18 points, Singleton, Super Valley, Brunel, 59, and Martin, at this case, looks to me like there's no way back. The way they played, you can't see any way back. What will be the focus of... Uh, of Mark's timeout now. Obviously, I don't think even he will believe that they can win the game. Will it just be a case of trying to get the girls a little bit of confidence? He keep coaching. Look, if you look at him right now, so if people can see it there on, on, on the screen. He's still coaching. You know, he's not gonna. He's not gonna go sit down and give up. He's not going. That's not the body language he's going to portray. That's not the message he's going to send out. He's still coaching the girls. You know, that's that's why he is the coach that he is. That's why he's so good. You know, he's still coaching. Same with Danielle, she's still coaching. She's not making any assumptions either. You know, you can look at the scoreboard and everybody can say, you know, game's over there. But both coaches are still talking to their teams that they've got to play out the fourth quarter. And that, that's why that's why they've done, you know, Mark's had loads of success in the past. You know, he's had, he's had two uh, he's had two wins this weekend. You know, and Danielle is still coaching her team there right now. So, 10 minutes to go. Yes, scoreline tells a story, but neither coach is gonna is gonna is gonna let this one just slip away and uh, they'll just go through the motions so as the players take the floor for the final quarter of the under 20 women's national cup final it's Brunel leading by 41 points at 59 to 18 so O'Leary in the corner to Jessica Lane who's now checked in for Brunel like Brunel have been so efficient, Matt. They scored 25 points in that quarter, like, and I wouldn't have thought that. If you'd asked me to guess how many points they got, like, until I looked at the stat sheet, I wouldn't have thought it was 25. They've been really efficient in what they've done. Yeah, created some great scores, and Del Thornton really racked up the scores in that quarter. McCarthy drives, doesn't get the ball, but gets on rebounds, does go inside. Great hustle by Hannah McCarthy, and she gets two points. Good steal by McCarthy, and it's a foul there on O'Connell. Glamire with a good start to this fourth quarter. A 
Holly Hurley for three, doesn't make it. O'Brien will chase the rebound. And she, great hustle edge, gets it and hits it off Adele Thornton's leg. And it'll be sideline ball to Gladmire. As we see O'Connell and Morrissey checking into the game. And Jessica Lane and Claire O'Connell will take a break. Early here, Costa O'Brien. Kira McCarthy into Hannah McCarthy again. She drives inside, rebounded by her sister. Doesn't make that, but rebounded by Hannah McCarthy. And now we see a little bit of rebound inside and some easy scores. Yeah, they're still playing. Thornton with the ball out to O'Leary. O'Connell's open for three, she'll take that. Doesn't go this time, but Amy Waters Again, dominates the ball, but ripped off her from Balby. Balby gets it forwards to O'Brien. Early, he drives the baseline, but again, we've seen excellent Amy Waters' defence there, just stand up straight, proved it very, very difficult for them to get inside. Uh, uh, got herself stuck, and Amy did a great job, and she should have been able to try to dribble back out, or should have been able to stop, reverse pivot or something, and just, but her teammates are standing still watching her too, so a real tough shot selection then. Foul outside there, on it. being called on O'Brien. Changes here. That's the timeout call from the scale. So we've seen a little bit of a better start in this quarter from Dan Meyer. Um, they've got the ball inside a little bit more, got a few rebounds, but uh, at this point, obviously, it's just a case of get what you can. Well, no, it's been a tough game for them, Matt. Mark won't want them going away, you know, going through the motions. He won't want them going away that where the, the fourth quarter peters out and that, you know, at least if they have a good fourth quarter, there's some positives and they might be small positives and people might not want to, might not realise them now or whatever, but he's going to keep these girls playing. Yeah, like we said, a lot of these girls play the Premier League team. They've a season still to go. They've, they've local league games, so don't want to dent their confidence, so he'll be pushing them to try and play as well as they can this last eight minutes and maybe enjoy it a little bit more. So it'll be Brunel's ball from the end line. Foul's called against Glenmire. And that's on number eight, Claire O'Brien. So Megan O'Leary will take it from the end line. Waters over to O'Connell. Thornton with the ball at the top of the key. She looks to penetrate. Good hands there from Hannah McCarthy, but ball's loose. Picked up from Sarah Morrissey. Shot clock just Brunel couldn't get the, couldn't get hold of the ball to get the shot up, and the 24 second clock has gone. Well, the plan for Gladmire would be just to try and win this quarter. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. That's the first. That's the. That's what they got to get out of this right now. Um, you know, that was a good defensive uh, possession there from them. They got a 24-second violation. Now Brunel came down, had a shot right at the front of the rim, didn't go in. Sarah Morrison takes that one. Doesn't quite go, but O'Connor gets the rebound again, and Thornton will drive. Takes the floater and again. You see a great touch from Adele Thornton, and. Uh, First half, Amy Waters was probably the, the outstanding player, but not, fi not followed closely by Adele, but Adele's really kind of taken over in the second half a little bit. Well, I think that's uh, the, the, their two names that come up in every final, Amy and Adele. You know, um, he used to come to the national camp in, in Gormanston, and uh, you know, we, we've seen them play, uh, seen them play a lot, so I think it's no surprise that Amy and... But the, all the Brunel girls have contributed. You know, um, Megan O'Leary had her three. She did really well. She's led her, led her team down the floor. I would, uh, as Thornton takes another two, doesn't go. I would never abuse my position as a commentator, Martin, and I mentioned the national camp, but as you mentioned it, uh, I feel only, oh, it's only proper to, to account it. The national camp is now open for booking, so if you want to go to www.basketball.ie, the national camp, as always, there's a video up there, so you can see the camp from previous years. 
and uh, maybe look for yourself if you've been, or if it's your first time, you can see what the camp's all about. We'll have coaches and players from the Women's Premier League and from across Europe and America, so it's a great, great camp for whatever standard you are, from beginner to international. You see all sorts there, and we cater for all sorts, so please do check it out uh, uh, and look to come along this summer. It goes between the July the 5th and July the 10th, and then July the 12th and the 17th, so please do check out basketballion.ie where you can download forms in terms of conditions. Now, it's the hard out of the way. Back to the game, it's 6.18 to go, and Brunel leads 61 to 12. Thornton, a rare miss here, and Sarah Kenny who's checked back into the game, looking to penetrate over to O'Brien. Good hands by Waters, and Thornton goes off the break. She'll go strong to the basket, missed on that occasion. And Waters just gets a tip on it, but it'll be Glanmire ball on the end line. Look, that's a nice move. Outside to Omanahi. Kenny was in a very quiet game after a good under-18s final yesterday. But it's great defence. Great shot from Sarah Morrissey, and she makes a three-point shot. And that extends the lead to 42 points, and Brunel haven't stopped playing either. Yeah, offensively, offensively they haven't uh, scored at the same rate as the other quarters, but defensively they still kept working and they've, they've limited Lammire's uh, easy shots. Another shot from Sir Kenny, rebound by Maeve Campbell, kicks it out for three. Oh, man, you can see by the look on her face as soon as she let it go that she knew that was going to be off. Again, Waters with a great rebound. She looks to push, gets fouled on the break. Amy Waters has dominated on the rebounds along with the help of uh, Megan O'Leary. She's 13 rebounds in the game. Megan's got 10. A timeout call, Martin, with five minutes to go. Difference of 44 points. Yeah, but if you if you look down at Landmire bench, uh, Matt, Mark, Mark called the timeout. He's still coaching. He's still and and look who's behind the bench encouraging the girls. It's uh, Neve and Gwanya Dwyer from the Premier League women's team. You know, this is what Landmire is about. You can see on the Landmire girls' faces how frustrated they are, how upset they are. Uh, this is this is not what they thought this day was going to be about. But you know, it's such a proud club, and they keep playing. You know, and Brunel have just this has been a great day for Brunel. But you know, it was going to be it was going to be one of these two teams who've had these players come to all our finals here over the last couple of years, we've seen them so often, you know, nobody expected this scoreline. Certainly not up here, and I wouldn't think too many in the crowd. This is just what happens once in a while. Yeah, very disappointed for them. Um, but uh, credit to Brunel. I think, Matt, we, we should point out there that uh, you know, we, we've just received a text there from, from uh, someone else who has who is a camp, and I think it should, should only be fair to mention that we should give them a, give them a small, small mention. What do you think? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, Martin. As we get a foul there, calls. <laughs> foul there against Amy Wa uh, on Amy Watts. So Amy will go shoot two shots on the foul line misses that one so Wilkinson looks to set up the play here we go to O'Brien and Oman here is Glenn Meyer. Keep on playing. Shot from Campbell. But again, Amy Waters dominates the rebounds. Waters with another two points. Wilkinson looks to penetrate inside. You can see that the girls from Glenn Meyer line up for threes, but. Not work from Claire O'Brien with a good rebound. Wilkinson shot from the short corner. Good on this occasion.
Yeah, Kenny with the rebound, gets it forward to Omani. Omani drives against Machete. Great, great basket nice. inside there. Real nice finish off for left hand. Yeah, you can see subs there, and you'll see uh, substitutes come in for Brunel, and Adele Thornton's coming back in. Maybe the battle for the MVP. Adele Thornton and uh, Amy Waters both had excellent games. So, uh, 3.39 to go, Martin. Let's look forward a little bit to uh, the game still to come this afternoon with Moy Curran, UC Demons, and Panthers against Oblate uh, Oblate Dynamos. Which way do you think those will go if you had to call them? <coughs> they're going to be, they're very close to call, Matt, the, uh, the Moy Cullen Demons game. Should be, should be really, really good. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've officiated, actually, at a, a Moy Cullen game this year, you know, and came down from Premier League last year, really good. Uh, a lot of the guys that played yesterday will be, be on that squad. Salva's coach and Nolik is there beside him. They'll play the same type style of basketball as yesterday. DCUD, or UC, DC, sorry, UCC Demons, we all know about. You know, they've Premier League champions from last night. You know, we've got players like Shane McCarthy, you know, who are real quality players. So that's going to be an interesting. In the women's game, I think everybody is, uh, has put uh, Port Leash Panthers down as favourites. They're unbeaten in the league so far this year. They're reigning National Cup champions as well. You know, they're, everybody's talking about their American Kelsey Wolf, but uh, I think Oblet Dynamos will uh, have different ideas about it. Yeah, Ob Oblet have been recent champions as well, so they're used to the occasion. As Sarah Kenny makes a two there. Cuts the score slightly to under 40, but again, it's Brunel have dominated this game from start to finish with Glenmire really struggling to score in the early stages. They've picked up their score in a little bit in this quarter, but again, have still struggled as Megan O'Leary drives inside and makes a great little two-point shot from the elbow. And O'Brien will look to penetrate here. She goes back out to Wilkinson. As the, the crowd start getting behind Brunel. Del Thornton drives the basket, misses that one, and a foul on Waters. She goes to rebounds. Yeah, Brunel, normally both teams are really well supported, and uh, you feel a little bit disappointed for the crowd because they would love to have had a really close one just to be screaming and shouting for the game. But the uh, Brunel crowd will be pleased either way. Absolutely, and uh, you know, there was great noise here for the for the final score between Vincent's and uh, Fa <coughs> excuse me, Father Matthews. I think everybody was thinking that it's going to be exactly the same here for this game. Hasn't worked out that way, but... Five with three misses, but Thornton gets that rebound. O'Leary inside, Machete side pass inside to uh, Waters, but it comes off off the foot. Valvier on the 3.9, turns down that shot. Wilkinson got away with a little bit of a travel there. Tries to pass outside to a man. He, with just two minutes left in this game. Great pass from O'Leary up to Thornton. Doesn't get the foul. Valvier to Manny, we see. Uh, Movement below us, Brunel look to change all five of their, of their five players and they'll make subs and, and bring on all the players. So onto the court comes Andrea Moynihan, Claire O'Brien, Jessica Lane, Grace Kelleher and Claire O'Connell. And uh, jubilant high fives below us, Martin, and totally deserved the win. One minute 20 to go in this game, and there's still hugs going below us. For Brunel, as it turns down. Well, the score is 69 to 28 as we move in, getting close towards the last minute of this game. And Andre Moynihan drives, gets the foul there on Valvi, and she'll get a chance to go to the foul line, register her first score of the game. Bit of confusion with the referees. One of them saying end line, one of them saying two shots. 
but win team penalties. There'll be two shots either way. And it'll be Andrea Moynihan going to the line for Singleton Super Value Brunel. makes that one extends the lead there the 42 Kenny takes a three and finally Sarah Kenny makes a three and you see those bonds from the Glanmire girls on the bench all up behind her they realize that it hasn't been their game but they're still still fighting still trying to encourage the rest of their team yeah they kept playing and oh nice job that's the Glanmire that we would have expected there Matt in transition kept moving came up with a nice layup you know yeah, unfortunately, the best of their basketball has arrived in the last minute of the game when the game is already out of sight. But uh, for anyone watching that hadn't seen Glanmire, that's the kind of basketball you'd expect to see. Lots of threes and some good pace, pass break basketball and passing. That's been the way that Brunello played today. Really great passing and making their open shots. And uh, make no bones about it, they've, been, they've thoroughly deserved their victory today. But um, Glanmire weren't at their best. But Brunel weren't giving them anything easy and didn't let them get any open shots to get to the confidence early on and that's been that's been the tale of this one as Moynihan scores on the free throw line again with 46 seconds to go Wilkinson back out to Kenny she'll take another three doesn't go this time rebound goes to Murphy it's Grace Kelleher. Jessica Lane back to Keller. Keller takes a little short shot from the foul line, doesn't get it. Sarah Kenny with the rebound. And a foul call on Kelleher. With just 20 seconds to go into the game. And Martin, obviously no arguments in the winner and uh, a great game from, from uh, Daniela O'Leary and her troops in Brunel. Absolutely, and you know, on the day, Brunel, Brunel played at the level that, that they're capable of playing at. Glenn Meyer, things didn't go for them. You know, it's not from a lack of effort, it's not from a lack of skill or quality either, Matt. So people don't people shouldn't be negative about it. Um, you know, these girls have been in finals before. These girls are some there's three or four of the Glenmire girls on the Irish under 18 national team. They're they're on merit. Um, you know, it's just been a tough day. That's it. You can really try sometimes to work out why things happen and stuff. But Brunel just the best team on the day. Well done for them. Yeah, if you see Brunel all hugging and dancing in the middle of the court. Um, bit of devastation from, from Damai. They know they underperformed. They'll be gutted with the way they played. Uh, but Brunel totally deserved the, the victory today. They played great basketball, offensively and defensively. Really put uh, Glanmire to the sword. And maybe just the third final of the weekend was one game too far for the Glanmire club. But they can't be too disappointed as uh, Meeklock once said, two out of three ain't bad. And Glanmire all dancing round, uh, doing a dance round at El Sorda. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but... Uh, just showed your age there, Matt, with that reference to, to Meatloaf. Uh, like, distance myself from that comment. I only heard it for the first time the other day. Uh, as the team shake hands, we're going to leave you to enjoy the presentations. Don't forget that we've got the... President's Cup coming up next at 2.30 between Moy Cullen and Blue Demons. And following that, it'll be the Women's Senior Cup with Port Leash Panthers taking on Oblet Dynamo. So please do, please do stay with us. We'll leave you to enjoy the celebrations and the presentation of the, of the National Cup and the MVP for this, trophy, for the, for this game. And uh, again, please do join us in about 30 minutes time for the next game.
This time next year, she's going to be a hospital in Quinnipiac, Connecticut. It's your 